Yo everybody, welcome, good morning. I hope you guys are starting your day off right. Is it is it 420? I know a lot of people are going to be out there celebrating, but you know who I am, Michael Matthew, and you are here to check out one of the greatest shows in the land. These are the breaks. These and these are the breaks. These are the breaks. Breaks. Oh, are are the the breaks. breaks. You know what it is. Yo, guys, welcome to another episode of The Breaks, the show that's giving you all of the latest and greatest breaking news out there. And, you know, of course, once again, I am your host, Michael Matthew, and it is 420, a lot of high time for a lot of people today. If, you know, if it's legal in your state and all that, uh, don't break the rules or break the laws. But uh, there's one team that wasn't on a high time yesterday. And that is the Los Angeles Lakers. And as you guys know, I am here in Los Angeles. And just know that L.A. fans are pissed. Because the Lakers took an L last night. A very disappointing game, too. The Lakers lost to the Memphis Grizzlies. 103-93 um, from the jump. I could just tell that the energy was of a team that was like, hey, we got the first win. We came here to get one. Let's get out of here. And I was very disappointed by it because this is the time to step on a team's throat and attack. And some blame has to be handed down and it's going to start, first of all, with Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis finished the game with 13 points, 8 rebounds, 5 blocks. But we need more from our big. We need this guy to be the best player on the team. He has to be the best player for the Lakers to win. And he just didn't do his job. He didn't play up to par and it hurt his entire team. He played some good defense, but we need more offensively if you're a Lakers fan. And for the Lakers, D'Angelo Russell, D'Lo, the guy who after the game said, I'm not a point guard on this team. I'm a basketball player. You're not being a good one right now. You are not playing good basketball. He had as many points as he did fouls, and that's never a good thing. Yeah, he chipped in seven assists, but D'Lo is really hurting his team right now and needs to find a groove uh, with the rest of his guys. We didn't get the performance from Austin Rivers like we got in game one, uh, but that was expected. You knew Memphis wasn't going to let him Go crazy like that. Rui is continuing to play well. He knocked down some shots. He scored 20 points. Uh, he did his thing. But back to D'Angelo Russell. He has shot under 50% in each of his 13 career playoff games. This is the longest such streak to begin a playoff career since DeMar DeRozan's 25-game streak from 2014 to 2016. So it just wasn't a good performance for the Lakers. And I'm even going to go to the head of the snake, Mr. LeBron James. Because Darwin Ham was there telling the guys, hey, we need to play like we want to win this game. It is time to take it. There was no John Morant. It was a perfect opportunity for the Lakers to take the wheel power of the Memphis Grizzlies by going back to L.A., being up 2-0, but it didn't happen. And this is where stats can be misleading. Because when you look at LeBron James's game of 28 points, 3 assists, 12 rebounds, you'll say, hey, he had a really good game. He did his part. But when it comes to the game of basketball as a great player, sometimes you have to give what your team needs from you. And yesterday, the Lakers needed more from him uh, when it came to his performance. He should have came out early. Him and AD should have looked at each other and said, this first quarter we dominate to let them know that they have no chance. But it didn't happen, and the Lakers took this L. Now they're going to come back uh, to Los Angeles to see if they can handle business. My expectation is that they will, but now this Memphis Grizzly team has life. Ja Morant is going to get healthy, and he's going to try to give them an added boost to help them, uh, you know, do what they're expected to do, which is win this series as a number two seed. But let me know what you guys think. How are you feeling about the Lakers going forward with game three going this weekend? Because I was disappointed. I was pissed. 
I was upset. It wasn't what I was expecting. I thought the Lakers would take care of business. Uh, another team picked up a victory without a star player. The Milwaukee Bucks took care of business, winning 138 to 122 without MVP candidate um, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, led by Drew Holiday's 24 points, 11 assists, 5 rebounds. What a baller, the UCLA alum. You got 25 points from Brooke Lopez. And the others pitched in. You have Pat Connington with 22 points and 17 points from Joe Ingles, who hit some big-time shots. Another disappointing fan base I would be if you're the Miami Heat because – you didn't take care of business. When you hear that there's no Ja, when you hear that there's no Giannis, you would think a team says pounce, 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 let's attack. But it didn't happen. I don't know what is going on with these teams. You're supposed to attack a team when they are weak. But the Miami Heat didn't take care of business. Now they go back to Miami. Now most likely they're going to see Giannis' next game and it's going to get ugly the way that we expected it. But great win by uh, Milwaukee Bucks is the reason why they're the number one seed in the playoffs, they have some ballers, but I thought Miami would come out and play, but it didn't happen. But shout out to the team who took care of business and said, I am not going to allow Minnesota to take anything. The Denver Nuggets picked up a victory. They were blowing out. Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota came storming back. They shot 81% in the second quarter, which is nuts. Uh, Anthony Edwards had 41 points doing his thing, balling, but it was the return. The return of Bubble Murray was there. He dropped 40 points, hitting some very tough shots, step backs, looking like that guy in a bubble that we thought the following year he was going to take off, and it was such a great thing to see. The man dealt with the injuries. We know about the ACL. Just been trying to find his groove, and if he can keep this up, and give you this guy once or twice a series, it's going to make the Nuggets a very, very tough out. I know a lot of people look over them, even though they're the top seed. They say the Clippers. They say the Suns. They say even the Lakers. Uh, but they're going to be tough. Jokic did his usual, 27-9-9, and balling out. If you're Minnesota, you have to be very disappointed. You have... Uh, three-time uh, defensive player of the year. You have two uh, number one overall picks. You got a good vet. And Mike Conley, but you can't seem to figure it out. And it stop it starts once again at the at the head of the snake. It's gonna be Cat. He needs to get inside. I guess once he told the world, I am the greatest shooting big of all time. I don't care about Dirk. I don't care about whatever names you put out. He said, damn it, that's how I'm gonna play. And it is not looking well. He finished the game with 10 points, 12 rebounds, five fouls, but for some reason, he is not dominating inside. When I thought about this whole trade for Rudy Gobert, I said, of course, Cat is going to be outside to shoot some jumpers, but I thought that they will find a way to punish, punish, punish teams inside, but it's not happening. And Cat needs to figure it out because I don't know what you do next for Minnesota. If you tell most teams you got two number one overall picks on your roster with uh, one of the better defensive players in the league and probably of all time, with a guy like Mike Conley, the vet to get things right, and you can't figure it out when it comes to winning games, uh, this is really bad. I know that Cat had, you know, the injuries that he's dealt with. But this, this, when does the excuses go away? When you have guys who are now veterans, who's had year in, years into the league, who had, you know, some playoff trips and things like that, when do we start to expect more? Because I believe that right now Cat isn't doing enough. So let's see if the Timberwolves can figure it out, make it more competitive. Because, damn it, we want to see some competitive basketball, but it looks like they might get swept it, it is crazy it is playoff time i'm so happy that it's here i love this time of the nba season tell me what you guys think about what's going on so far with the playoffs and i have to discuss the games that are going on tonight but you know i gotta take a break i need some water i got some snacks there in the back so you go do the same i'll catch you guys in a second take a break baby United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than yeah, security. Yeah, I'm trying to set up we a day. Your livelihood. Now she's like getting adjusted to her. United life. One Protection yeah. Services. Yeah. 
you know, that's what she hit me with. I'm like, damn. But yeah, I'm trying to get her here. I told her, like, yeah, I want you to come check it out, you know, because I would love to get, you know, e even if it's not Lexi. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your break. I hope you're feeling good. Happy 420 to all of those that are indulging into uh, the shenanigans today. I hope you guys stay safe, but have a good time. And I thank you for joining me and tapping in because I have to keep it on this breakaway report. You know it is hoops, hoops, hoops all day, every day. The NBA playoffs are here, and it's so exciting. Um, so tonight's game, I have to give you my preview and predictions. We have the Sixers at the Nets to start things off. I think that the Sixers are going to take care of business. Um, I feel they like, it's, it's no time to play. We know who we're going to most likely see after this matchup. We don't want to waste any games playing around with our dinner. So I believe that the Sixers will take care of the Nets tonight. Um, shout out to Bridges, who's playing some good basketball. Spencer Dinwiddie, who's doing some things. But they're just clearly overmatched. Uh, Doc Rivers is doing a good job putting his team in the position they need to be to win. Shout out to Tyrese Maxey. Um, I'm starting to question, and you guys let me know if I'm wrong. Is Tyrese Maxey now the second best player on the Philadelphia 76ers? And it's no slight or disrespect to James Harden. We know what he does. He's the playmaker for that team. He can get buckets when need be. But getting buckets is what, is what Maxey does every single game. He is a problem, and I know that the Sixers are hoping that he can stay consistent with what he's doing as far as the scoring in because it just makes them that much tougher. If you have James Harden as your third guy, we know, like I said, he's going to play, make, and get people easy buckets. But if he can be your third guy in scoring and things like that because Ma Maxie is doing his part, then you have Tobias Harris, and you just have the rest of the talent that Philly has got. Philly is going to be a very dangerous team led by the the guy that should be the MVP, Joel Embiid, um, they are a team that is looking scary. So let's see if they decide to pounce and say, let's attack, let's go for a sweep, and I think they will do so tonight. Um, let me let me know what you guys think, who you guys are picking tonight. Kings Warriors. I know the talk of the town is Draymond Green with the suspension, which I believe was the right call. They're right to look at somebody's past if they have these offenses that they make these type of crazy moves during the game. And when I saw it, I clearly saw a guy who just who pounded on a guy, who stumped on a guy, looking like Stone Cold Steve Austin with someone in the corner on the turnbuckle. This is not the WWE, Draymond. This is NBA basketball. And we, we know your history, so I believe that he deserved uh, suspension. The league did it right. The league, you know, they got him out of that game because, you know, the energy was bad. And then you had the uh, commissioner in the building, Adam Silver, and you're looking at the crowd. You're cheering them on, telling them, let's go. Come on. You're, you're sending profanities into the crowd. Um, he deserved his suspension. If you believe wrong, I don't get how you don't agree with this uh, call by the NBA. But, you know, it is what it is. Now the Warriors have to step up without Draymond once again, looking like the 2016 finals. Uh, but they, they've been one of the best teams, better teams in the uh, NBA when it came to 
to winning at home. Now they're back at home. And the Kings did their job. The Kings took care of business there at, uh, you know, in Sacramento. Now it's up to the Warriors to step up and do their thing. They need more from Jordan Poole. You got people out there like Kyle Herter saying that you're not a good basketball player. Are you going to step up? Because they need you, Jordan Poole. A. Wiggins has to, uh, you know, make his plays and do his thing. But people can't act like the Sacramento Kings are going in and watching the Warriors. They're very tight games. If Wiggins makes a wide open three, we go into overtime to see what happens. If Steph doesn't shoot a one-legged floater and shoots a regular jumper and knock it down, we go into overtime to see what happens. So the Warriors still have a chance. I'm not giving up hope. I actually think that they will take care of business tonight at home, putting all the pressure on the Kings to win game four. So I'm going with the Warriors tonight. They're going to take care of business. And then we have the game that's going to finish up here in L.A. with a series that has been looking great on both sides. I believe that this will go seven. Uh, prior, I picked six, but the Clippers are showing that they are ready to go. And playoff Kawhi is here. It is a real thing. That guy says, this is why I low manage, because I can show up and give performances like this. The Suns are at the Clippers um, here at Crypto.com Arena. And I'm going to go with the Suns. I think the Suns figured out some things. Um, late in uh, uh, game two uh, with Devin Booker, you know, going crazy with his 40-point uh, performance. Kevin Durant with his 25 points looking steady. DeAndre Ayton showed up. Uh, Craig knocked down some threes, some big shots. Uh, you know, you're hoping that their depth shows a little bit more. The Clippers need their bench to show up. But it, it looked bad. They, they took an L. And Russ actually gave you a good offensive performance with his 28 points. But I believe that they're going to split in Los Angeles the same way that they split in Phoenix. So I'm going tonight with the Suns to take care of business. So you guys can always let me know what you feel, what you think. Hit me up in the comments down below and tell me who are winning these games tonight. But I got to give you some break it or leave it, baby, and keeping it in the NBA because... Are you buying or selling what I'm going to be giving you? Because I feel that it should be done. I feel it should be a wrap. I hate to see it. What are you guys' thoughts? What do you guys feel about seeing away jerseys being worn on home floors? I, I know we all watched the game last night. We saw the Nuggets in their dark blue jerseys playing against, you know, the white jerseys of the Minnesota Timberwolves and if you're you know an older fan you're probably going to watch the game and be like what the hell is going on and I'm tired of seeing it I'm tired of watching the NBA and seeing the Lakers gold um, on the road it, it just shouldn't happen so I, I wish they would come up with something to say hey we want to make it easier for the fans. Let's keep it what it is. If you have some alternate jerseys that look really cool, of course you can see them at home and rock them. But at home should be your whites, should be your light colors, and the dark color team should be away. It goes all the way back to, what, elementary basketball, AAU basketball, high school. Let's not try to reinvent the wheel. Let's keep the jersey game how it should be. I don't want to see a white Celtics jersey ever on the road, especially in L.A. So y'all let me know. Should we break it or leave it? Should we be done with the away jerseys being worn as the home jerseys? I, I just don't get it. Uh, but I got I got to talk about something that's really big, the breaking news coming out of baseball. That's right. I'm talking baseball. Uh, the Oakland A's are looking soon to be the Las Vegas A's. Um, everybody's been kind of expecting this. We see the Raiders is already there in Vegas. There's been uh, words for years that the Rio area uh, in Vegas will become where the baseball stadium uh, will be built. And it's looking like that's going to be very, very true. Uh, I know a lot of people in Vegas are excited to have baseball, but I know a lot of people in Oakland are going to be very disappointed because they don't have the Raiders. Uh, you know that the Golden State Warriors have moved away, and now they're going to have no baseball. Um, it sucks to see this happen to a once great sports city, 
like Oakland. But this is Las Vegas, baby. Everybody wants a piece of that Vegas money, and that's exactly what the MLB is doing. Let me know. What, what do you guys think? Are you feeling this move for the Oakland A's going to Vegas? I know the players are going to love it. They're able to live in Las Vegas and, you know, have good times there. And to have the Raiders there, to have the Golden Knights and then the A's, it's going to be great for Las Vegas. You know what that means, what's coming up next. You're going to see some NBA basketball in Las Vegas. A team will be there soon. You see the champion aces of the WNBA there. Vegas is going to be booming even more. Y'all might see me there every weekend in Las Vegas once you add this baseball team, and I'm excited about it. Um, I got to shout out a guy that's balling in baseball who's breaking all the rules because he's just so goddamn great. That is Aaron Judge last night. He hit a homer, and he robbed a home run of Otani as the Yankees picked up a win. 3-2 in extra innings. Shout out to Aaron Judge. The guy is just amazing. But, hey, don't you go too far. Go get you some more snacks. Get you some more water. But don't go away because I have more for you here at your favorite show, The Breaks, baby. Catch you in a second. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Welcome back. I hope you guys are all ready for more of me because you know who I am. Mike Hill Matthew here with you with the breaks, giving you all the latest and greatest of the breaking news. So I took you from the hardwood to the diamond. Now, of course, I have to take you to the gridiron because this is the NFL breakdown, and it's not too much to give you. Uh, shout out to Tua, who's, of course, returning, but he actually thought of retirement uh, dealing with all of the concussions, the the hits that he dealt with last year. Um, he actually said, you know, he's actually been learning how to fall, which I think players do have to learn how to take these hits and not just slamming their heads back. But I'm happy that we're going to see him back. He's going to have Tyreek Hill, of course, with him again, Jalen Waddle. Uh, they have a hell of a team over there, Jalen Ramsey on the defensive side. So I'm happy, too, that you're back. We, we, we want to see a long career, stay healthy, uh, you know, prayers and love out to you. Uh, they have a receiver trade but it wasn't the one that I wanted I thought it would be DeAndre Hopson to Hopkins to the Chiefs but it's not it's the LA Rams they traded Allen Robinson a guy that they picked up last year it just didn't work out they traded him in the seventh round pick to the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers he passed his physical so the trade is official he's going to be there you know an added piece uh, to, to join uh, Pickett over there the young quarterback who they're going to be depending on so let's see if Allen Robinson can have a bounce back season we know he can play but we just didn't see it here in LA so I think maybe the move may be great for him um, one week away baby the, the NFL draft is going to be here uh, next week, Kansas City, Missouri. I will be in a building. If you're going to be at the draft, 
make sure you come tap in with me. Hit me up, Michael the PG uh, on Instagram, on Twitter. I will respond. And you know, let's let's create some memories there in the draft. I'm gonna be covering, of course, the LA teams, but I'm gonna have to tap in with my Kansas City market because if you don't know, I have a show for my Chiefs uh, with Star K Media. It's called Arrowhead Ally. Shout out to my guys. Uh, who are my co-hosts on that show. So the NFL draft is going to be exciting. We don't know for sure who's going to be the first overall pick yet. It's starting to sound like it's going to be Bryce Young to the Panthers. But we'll see. But we're a week away. I can't wait. Kansas City is so excited. It's going to be the biggest stage that the NFL draft has ever had uh, there in Kansas City. So I know the fans are going to be so lit. You know, it's 420. They're going to be lit uh, next week. And, you know, it's, it's going to be really dope because you're going to have the defending champions with the Chiefs and their home team doing this. I know it's going to be epic. I can't wait to get memories and show you memories. I'm going to be posting all day on social media, so I hope you guys are ready for that. So before we get out of here, of course, I have to give you uh, my breaks game of the week. But it's not a game. It is actually a fight. This weekend, boxing fans. We get what we want. It is exciting times. We get the big time fight. We have Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis. Let me know who who are you going with? Who are you rolling with? I'm I'm gonna go with Tank Davis. I believe that he's more of the vet. The guy has some big fights under his belts, but it is going to be a great, great fight. Two great boxers, two great names in the social media world. These guys are going to be ready to go, and it is going to be a fun time. I, I wish I was going to Vegas. I wish I was going to Vegas, but the A's aren't there yet. So um, I'm gonna make sure I check it out with family, friends, and it's going it's gonna be fun. You know, you remember those old times where you would kick back and order the fight and everybody come over the barbecue is going the drinks are going up and it's going to be great 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 i'm so excited for it and i'm so excited uh thanks a lot to the great show snowfall which finished up last night there on fx um a crazy crazy ending that i didn't expect uh, i don't want to be a spoiler for those of you that are going to go check it out and go and maybe start from the first episode and go all the way through but it was a great great show depicting the uh the crack epidemic uh in los angeles if you haven't seen it you need to go and check it out what a great job rest in peace of john singleton who helped put this show together they paid homage to him within this last episode you're going to see it uh there once you check it out but they did such a great job with it it is the end of the series end of the show uh great kudos to you guys you guys did a great great job shout out to the mandalorian another show that i follow uh season three has come to an end kind of a weird ending to it but if you're watching it you're a star wars fan you're gonna you're gonna love it no matter what so uh shout out to uh the mandalorian they do a great job there the star wars uh, world is just is out of this world uh you know and I, I can't wait to see what's next especially with the ahsoka uh series um but there's some bad that's going on when it comes to the entertainment world frank ocean he is no longer headlining Coachella after suffering injuries to his left leg. He is dropping out. A lot of people are disappointed. They were disappointed uh, last weekend when they saw him perform because it was a lot of non-live singing. Uh, you could tell that he was hurt. You know, everybody was kind of pissed off. Like, this is the performance we get. We've been waiting to see you all this time. This is the Frank Ocean that we get. So I'm not sure what Coachella is going to do to... Um, replace him but i know a lot of people are disappointed frank ocean has this um following of people who love his work who love his music and that's why they they were all in coachella going crazy so to lose this guy it is going to be uh, a very big thing but man I, I hope you guys enjoy your day i hope you guys are you know safe today and have a good time because i know that it's 420 and a lot of people are going to be blown out of their mind but you got to think safety first um it's going to be a great weekend of sports it's going to be a lot of uh, entertainment that that scary movie uh evil dead rises looks amazing i may have to go and check that out this weekend maybe you should too if you like horror but it's a lot of great things going on and i have you covered every thursday to make sure the breaking news is here for you in the best way possible by yours truly michael matthew himself so i hope you guys have a good day and i will catch you 
very, very soon. I will be at the draft next week, so it won't be a new episode. But um, you know I got you covered. Follow me once again at Michael the PG Instagram, Twitter, and I'm going to let you know what's going on when it comes to the sports world. I catch you soon, everybody. Peace. These are the breaks.